Thank you for joining me, dear one, on my continuing mission to see if what they say about the great harlot is so. Well, dear one, let's get to it. When you finish reading this scroll, tie a stone to it and cast it into the Euphrates. Then you are to say, in the same way Babylon will sink and never rise again because of the disaster I will bring upon her. It's found in Jeremiah 51, verse 63 through 64. Now this verse in Jeremiah reminded me of Revelation 18:21. Then a mighty angel picked up a stone the size of a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, With such violence, the great city of Babylon will be cast down, never to be seen again. Now, that verse reminded me of Matthew um, 18.6 and Luke uh, 17.2, where Jesus said some pretty ominous things. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. That was in Matthew 18, 6. Now considering Luke 17, 2, it would be better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck and be thrown into the sea than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. That is what caught my attention after reading Revelation 18.21. Jesus made a reference to this unusual judgment that is reserved for the whore of Babylon in the book of Revelation. He linked her punishment to those who make his newly bought sheep to stumble in their faith in him. Hello, Catholic Church? Uh, yes, Jesus has your number and it's up. Hello? Hello? Must be a bad connection. So this is my PSA for all the false teachers and prophets out there. Beware. Apparently, there's a millstone in Jesus's quarry with your name on it. You know, um, being that the city of Babylon was not in existence at the time of John's vision and the writing of Revelation, uh, one must wonder what city the angel was talking about if it wasn't literally Babylon. Hmm... We'll soon see. That was a hint for you. So God put violence in the heart of these ten kings and the beast so that they would destroy the harlot. Uh, so, and they will be doing the Lord's bidding, whether they admit it or not. They'll probably be thinking they're doing their own bidding. But uh, when, when God finally goes to war, he plays for keepsies. Now, um, what empire do we suppose that was in John's day uh, that would have that amount of power to do such a thing? Yes, Rome. Or what the current harlot Catholic Church uh, hypocritically likes to call the pagan Roman Empire. And amazingly, hundreds of years after John's vision wouldn't you know it, the Roman Empire was divided into 10 kingdoms. <laughs> Imagine that, 100% accuracy. Now, the historical 10 kingdoms uh, that were formed by the division of the Roman Empire were, or are, Anglo-Saxons, that's England, the Franks, France, the Alemanni, Germany, the Lombards, Italy, the Suevi, Portugal, the Visigoths, Spain, Burgundians, Switzerland. Now, if you'll notice, the last three of the Ten Kingdoms listed here are extinct. The Ostrogoths, the Vandals, and the Heruli. No modern kingdoms exist for them. Apparently, those three nations were not eh, friendly toward the Harlot Catholic Church, so they were uprooted from the heads of the beast. So it looks like this prophecy was fulfilled at that time. Well, at least the part of the uprooting of the three kingdoms from the 10. Now it looks more and more incriminating for the Catholic Church as being the harlot riding the beast since the Pope is the one who orchestrated the wars that got rid of the three Catholic apostate nations. But since the, the seven remaining nations are still in league with the harlot, the other part of this prophecy hasn't come to pass. Now let's look at the inventory that the Scarlet Harlot and her evil Protestant daughters will no longer be pushing. 
gold, silver, precious stones, and pearls, fine linen, purple and scarlet silk, thiine wood, a fragrant wood used in sacrifices, vessels made of ivory, expensive and rare woods, brass, iron, and marble, all kinds of frankincense, spices, ointments, aloes, foods like wine, oils, fine flowers, and wheat, animals like sheep and horses, chariots, slaves, and last but not least, the souls of men. And not only will the harlot meet her doom, but the harlot's lovers and tradesmen will not get out alive either. Even though they try to distance themselves from her according to scripture, they will have been marked with a mark of the beast. They belong to him and not God. I mean, they are after all mourning for their harlot religion that is going up in smoke. They aren't cheering. You know, it's hard for me to believe sometimes that people who once claimed to love God will actually curse the Lord Jesus because of the torments he sends upon them for the purpose of getting them to repent. But they won't. They are so mixed up that they'll probably think it's Satan that's tormenting them. Now again, how will these kings or kingdoms um, destroy her? The false church the idolatrous system that has been set up that worships fake Jesus. They will leave her naked and desolate. The people in those remaining seven nations are leaving the so-called church in droves. And Christendom's harlot, embodied in the heretical faiths, is grasping at straws, trying to figure out how to get their attendance back up. Now, as a result of this, uh, the um, those nations are getting more and more secular as the years go by. And, and for years now, the peoples uh, of these nations and in those churches have been exposing the atrocities that have been committed that is happening in their churches, such as greed, sexual perversion, and false teachings, all to the so-called Christian churches, naked and desolate shame. Now the, the next judgment against her is, they will eat her flesh. This is symbolic for a violent and pitiless death at the teeth of a brute beast. The harlot is going to be given double what she dealt out, and the Catholic and Protestant churches have a huge closet full of dead men's bones, men who were martyred by the mother and daughter, dynamic duo for not bowing their knee to the beast. So how will the aforementioned nations eat her flesh? I don't know, but it will be interesting to see how this comes about. Now, personally, I think this may be... Um, the fruition of what Jesus said, how the love of many will grow cold and they will turn on one another and they'll turn them, uh, turn one another into the authorities, you know, in the name of fake Jesus, thinking that they'll be doing God a favor. Um, they'll probably be beheaded, tortured, and Lord knows what, what else will happen to them. Now, the sad part of this is, um, like Paul, they'll probably be thinking that they'll be doing God a favor for turning these people in. Now, on the flip side of this, uh, the ones being killed, um, they'll probably think that they're martyrs for Christ. <sighs> now, the next judgment that, uh, that will happen to the great harlot is they will burn her with fire. So this symbolism may literally be true because in the Old Testament, the burning of a priest's daughter turned harlot was actually prescribed in Leviticus 21.9, as well as being given to the perverted man that slept with a woman and her daughter. All of them were to be burned with fire, according to Leviticus 20.14. Now, all of these horrors don't really make sense in the natural if they are applied literally and in succession. I mean, how do you eat the flesh of an idolatrous religion or city after it has been made desolate and then burn it with fire? I don't know. Now, even so, these horrifying and just punishments will be done to the harlot when the ten kings unite and give their kingdoms to the beast for one hour or for a small moment of time, that's what that really means, until the words of the Lord have been fulfilled. We don't have a time frame here for when all of this will happen. Now, instead, we're just going to have to be dependent on um, God's timing. And he isn't really telling us exactly when all this will happen or how long this entire process will take. Now, 
Hence, that is why we have all these wild speculations that come from the harlot's clergy. Now, I guess it would just make more sense if we just take Revelation 17, 18 as it comes. In this case, we are told that the great city is um, the one that rules over the kings of the earth. So, if it is in fact a city that will be uh, raped, pillaged, and plundered, and burned as it were, and even eaten, uh, then what city is this angel talking about? Rome? Uh, you're going to have to wait until my next video to find out. So I want to thank you, dear one, for joining me on my continuing mission to see if what they say about the great harlot is so. Bye-bye for now.